on everybody welcome to another classic convo today i got the one and only al b with me it is only one of me I, it, it <laughs> is it is so you know how I, I already started my show up i have to have i have to tell a story about who, whoever i'm interviewing because nine times out of ten i probably already know him okay so me and al me and al b we met how long ago two birthdays by two, by two, <laughs> three, three years ago, man. By two, three. no, it was before then. Yeah, that's right. It was oh, before then. It's all at your show. It was, but it was at one of my comedy shows. Yeah, at the uh, at four J. Yeah, yeah, it was at so, one of my ooh, comedy shows at four J. I remember who I was with at the time. So, who that had to be like five years, it six had, years ago. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it was a long time. So I, I met him at one of my comedy shows like long, a long, 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 long time ago, and we just been like. I can say we are groupies behind each other. Right. Like every time we see each other, we like screaming like, ah! I'm like, it's my favorite radio personality. It's my favorite comedian. Ah! So we screaming for each other. But let me tell you the funny thing he did one night. We was coming from an event. And I ended up going to one of my my Friday night restaurants to chill, and they had a whole new wait a, a whole new waitress team there. Cause usually when I walk in, they go ahead and feed me. They know what I want to drink and all that. But this time they had all new people, so I had sat down in my little corner with my laptop, and I was going to work. And then Alby, you already know what I'm finna tell. <laughs> then Alby came. He was like, "Well, they you know, I'm like, yeah, and blah blah blah." And he said. Is that are they helping you? And I was like, nah. I said, well, you know they ain't came yet. I'm chilling. He said, nah, nah, nah. Uh, nah. Hold on. He went to the other side of the restaurant, grabbed the first waitress he seen, literally pulled her over there, and he said, she hungry. Help me. And then he had walked off and went. He had walked off and left. <laughs> that was. <laughs> But you got your food though, right? I, I got my food. I got my food. So, man, friends do anything for you because he literally like dragged her over there. Like, hey, she hungry and just left. And she was like, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, about the nourishment of my people. So. All the time. All the time. All the time. So, LB, tell us about yourself. Um, Radio Disc Jockey, uh, San Francisco native. Uh, love living in the Port City now. Um, uh, I'm single. <laughs> that's more of a disease that's more, <laughs> that's more of a disease right now than it is a situation yeah but, yeah yeah uh, uh, I was a single father uh, raised a dope daughter um, yeah that's me in a nutshell that's yeah. it. so when can we what you on KDKS KDKS one oh two one one. Monday, right, Monday through Friday at 9am right after Steve Harvey um, the show is uh, definitely uh, focused on the music, uh, R and B and old school, which is you know basically right. uh, uh, my passion with music. Anyway, lies right there with the only thing that I don't get to touch that I'm passionate about is old school hip hop. Right, right. So how how has it been? How long have you been into the radio? <sighs> Twenty daughter's twenty three, so twenty two years. Twenty two years here, or no? Well, no, twenty two years in radio. I've been at this station for a long time. I've been at KDKS for fifteen of those. Yeah, yeah, in pretty much the same spot, right? Right, right, right. yeah, for fifteen, and which is uh, somewhat unheard of in radio. People don't really yeah. keep, you know, unless you got a syndicated show, you don't really stay in one place anymore. Like that, I, I don't know. I just thought about it while I was saying it. I don't really know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> so, how did you get into radio? Crazy. So I always wanted to do it. I, I always, uh, uh, when I was in the Bay, I would start classes and then drop out or whatever, mm -hmm. and, you know, or something would come up, or you know, somebody would be like, "Hey, I'm pregnant. You need another job," or something like that. So I couldn't finish school <laughs> with it. So uh, one day, I'm selling cars really uh, uh, at my desk. Yeah, I'm living in Atlanta, Texas now. My husband and my father, and, and I'm selling cars. And at my desk, I'm listening to uh, uh, the radio, and, and I want to hear a song. I never forget the song. I called the radio station, and, and nobody's ever requested this song on the radio since then. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was Craig Mack, uh, Jockey My Style. Wow! You know? Wow! So I called the station. I requested the song. The DJ played it, and uh, when she played it. I called her back and I was like, thank you. And I said, you know, I've always wanted to do what you do. And she said, well, we're looking for help on the weekend. You got a fax machine at work. I was like, yeah, she faxed me an application. For the sake of argument, that was a Wednesday. And Saturday night I was on the air. Wow. Yeah, that's how it happened. 
And your first radio station was where? KZRB. And uh, the station itself was Hooks, Texas, but it's in the Texarkana market. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to KZRB, that whole crew. B&H Broadcasting. Local black-owned radio station. Wow, yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So, and how did you end up here in Shreveport? So, I, you know, that was small town radio. You know, I, I grew up listening to the jocks in in, in New York, in DC, and, and of course the Bay Area, and and I, and I, that was my vision of radio. I wanted to be like those guys, you know. So I had to go bigger than than Texarkana, and and I, and I saw stuff, you know, like online, like their studios look a little different than these studios. Mm-hmm. I want to work in a studio that looks like that, and uh, just um, um, Kenny Poo. Who I'm pissed off at right now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Benson Bell, uh, they had a crew back then. They were doing a, an event called Freak. They did the Shreveport Freak Mix. Okay, and yeah. They, and they and they did some advertising with us, and they gave us, you know, they got us hotel rooms and mm-hmm. stuff. And we came down here, and, and and I met the DJ. I met GQ Riley, who I'm I don't I don't fuck. I, I'm pissed off at him right now too, <laughs> uh, forever. Uh, uh, but I met uh, DJ Daryl. I met him. I met Jabba Jaws. You know, I met Shreveport Radio right. at the time, and I was like, and I, you know, I started listening to him more. I was like, Elaw. I met Elaw that day, uh, and I was like, uh, yeah, I want to get down there. So the more people, I just kept talking to people, talking to people, and I'm like, look, you need to talk to Michael T. Mm-hmm. I said, Michael T. A cassette tape, <laughs> uh, air check tape, uh, I, um, I sent it to him, and he called me, he was like, well, really, your air check sounded terrible, but, uh, if anybody knows Michael T, if you remember Michael T, uh, R.I.P. Michael T, uh, he would, he, he, he clicked when he talked a little bit, young man, <laughs> your air check was terrible. But somebody bold enough to submit that air check, I just had to meet you. You're an outstanding man. I think I'm going to give you the job. And I, started wow. doing, and I started doing weekends here. And, you know, he just put me on the air. He never told me when to stop. It was like, came to the first radio station. So, uh, it was the night they were having the talent show size contest. Mm-hmm. When he put me on the air, he never told me when to stop. So, he put me on the air like 5 o'clock. Here at midnight. I'm still, I'm still wow. on the air. But everybody at the station is, you know, at the event. Convention center, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Except me. I'm Except there. Except you. I wonder when I get off. You know, that's <laughs> midnight. I'm already over the next day. You know, I just get a phone on the hotline. Hey, can't you take that? Young man, what are you still doing? <laughs> I need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, wow. this guy's got some determination of giving him a job. Wow. So, wow. yeah, that's how I got to the for me. Yeah. So, who did you look up to? to Mentor to where you are now. Who Man. helped? Who helped? Because you didn't go to school for it. You no. didn't go to school for broadcast or anything like this. So who who helped? Who mentored you to get to get where you are right now? So I tell you, um, Kelly Dupree uh, was working overnights when, when I first started. She trained me on on the board. She gave me some. She was like, because of course, yeah, you know, I came from a radio station where they weren't necessarily too much in, into the technical part of it. Right. So you know, she noticed. Michael T noticed. A couple of people noticed. Like. Well, yeah, decent boys. You know, got a fairly good command of the English language, but you make every mistake in the book. So they, you know, they kind of just everybody. Uh, there was a Kelly Berry at the time. Kid Terry was a gospel jack. He helped me in, out at the time. Uh, Lee Mack, um, T Lamp were all. You know, they were all people who had done it for a while, and and they just all was like, look, here's what you're doing wrong. You know, do that. Right. So, you know, I had no point of reference to say I doubt it. You know, I yeah. was, and they were, so I would just say, thank you. And then take what all they, they did and, and, you know, use it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. So, I I think that, that somebody is the the dog. Okay. Hold on. Pause. Um, that's crazy. So, let me, I can interview myself. So, now nah, I got this. What do you like to do in your spare time? I don't know, we don't get too much spare time. Like, every once in a while, I'll um, answer doorbells, but since she got that, I, I figured there's no reason for me to get it. Oh, that's uh, oh. he coming to do the, to do the podcast. Okay, I'm back. And, uh, that was a small commercial break. Right? Because, eh, eh. 
All right. So I'm not gonna ask him more questions until he come back in. Hold on. Hey. Everybody familiar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just said I didn't prove anything. I just said that. <laughs> Okay, so you also a music director. Tell, tell me about that. Uh, so uh, shortly after I got to KDKS, you know, uh, Quinn and, and, and the uh, the uh, corporate structure there were doing some changes there, and they needed a music director, something they hadn't had before. He asked me. He actually promoted me uh, to music director. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I worked kind of very real closely with uh, Quinn Edwards in uh, uh, figuring out the playlist and, and some of the other things going on over here. Yeah. All right. So on on the radio you do your R and B and old school, right. but you also know a lot about hip hop. Like yeah, like you so old, like you was there when hip hop said, "Oh yeah, I am." Yeah, right, I am that kind of old. Uh, I, I I was nine years old whenever Rapid Delight was on the air. I also remember King Tim uh, Three by uh, uh, Fatback, so which is sometimes called the first real hip hop song. But yeah, I remember that when it was new. <laughs> so you thinking about doing like an old school hip hop show? I would love to. I, I absolutely would love to. But unfortunately for me, in this market anyway, you know, there's already someone who is established as that guy here, and and he happens to be on the same radio station. So you know, it would be like, you know, that if people know Jabba Jaws for that, right, now, right. But I would love to, and I know that my perspective on on hip hop is a, is a little different, you know. Growing up on the West Coast, spending all summer, every summer on the East Coast, you know, uh, like, when I moved down here, I got to discover a whole lot of hip-hop. I knew nothing about, like, when I moved here, I knew very little about UGK. I had mm -hmm. no idea who 3-6 Mafia was. All I knew was that every time that song played, there was a fight in the club. That's what I remember about <laughs> <laughs> Like, so, you, had, uh, you had to come prepared. Right, right. right, so, right. So, with every with every uh, uh, region of hip hop, you'll find out that the people that you find out about first, if you dig just a little deeper, mm -hmm. you know, you'll find out where it came from. You know, where it really came from. Like people now who consider themselves the younger crew consider themselves they know uh, Jay Z, but do they know J O? You know right. what I mean? Like, do they know where that where that that tree? you know, what the roots on that tree are, you know. So I got to find out a lot of, a matter of, Ghetto Boys, Outkast, MC Shy D was pretty, and, and Luke, that was pretty much my knowledge of Southern Hip Hop when I yeah. moved here. So I got to find out so much, like, I didn't know what Lil Kiki was, I didn't know Lil, uh, Lil Flip, I didn't know what that stuff was. So I got to discover a whole lot more stuff uh, when I got there. All right, so whenever y'all see LB in public, Please feel free to challenge him on whatever hip hop question Man, you have. Because he's yeah. guaranteed to answer it correctly. Like, we had a whole discussion before we even started this yeah. interview about the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah, and he was right. telling me he know how to go ride the wheel and get high and all that stuff right there. So, yeah, I learned a thing or two just discussing just discussing hip hop with him. So, also. And hey, while we're speaking of ghost riding the whip, uh, was it in my feelings challenge? It goes right wrong. What you mean? It goes right and went wrong. <laughs> and then, and, and wrong. Reality, you know, that was sideshows have always been a thing in the Bay. Like, before they were sideshows, they was just a bunch of people, uh, oh, like, really taking over an intersection mm -hmm. and doing stupid stuff, really. Uh, you know, of course, when I got too old to participate in stuff like that, it got a name, sideshows and, and the ghost ride and the gas break dipping and all of that stuff started taking place. But uh, you guys in, in the field, in my field, you guys are doing it wrong. <laughs> There's a proper way to sideshow it. That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> That's not it. So also, you funny. I, you you know, came kind of, to my comedy show, but you the one funny. I, you know. Have you ever thought about doing comedy? I'm so afraid. Yes. You know, just like anybody, any actual comedian from that that is in my age or our age group, you know, in that in there, uh, I I grew up sneaking listening to my mom's Richard Pryor records, mm -hmm. and it was the most 
captivating. And we had uh, Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby, Red Fox, uh, uh, Lawanda Page. Mm -hmm. We had all those records in the house. Uh, records! So those of you don't know, there used to be these things called records. You put them on turntables, you stick a little needle on them, they go round and round and round at 33rd <laughs> RPMs, and they would make sounds. But yes, uh, I, would, I would listen to them, and, and, and I would know their routines just like I would know a song. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm not that funny. Maybe I just recycle a lot of stuff that I heard, right. you know, growing up off of those records and stuff like that. Because I hear comedians today, it's like you and Prelo, I hear you guys talk about timing sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea what you guys are talking about with the comedic timing, you know what I mean? But I hear you guys talk about it like, okay, there's something I don't know uh, right. about it. But yes, I've always wanted to do that, and, and sometimes I can write some stuff that's pretty funny. But how to deliver it and to actually have the courage to stand behind a microphone and look in people's faces and deliver it. I've yet to be able to do that. And I'm about 48, so. Yeah. Right. You still got time. Because, I mean, it's just a. Take it well, I'm okay. But it took a lot of. 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 Like, when you're doing comedy, it, it took up a lot of people. Some people didn't make their break until they were up in age. Right. Robin Harris so, is the story. That right. I think he was 39 when right. he started. He was, he was dead before he was 50. Was it? Was it I think so. Was it like 49 when he I died? I think so. Right, so. Yeah, so, I mean, you have plenty of time. So, have you ever thought about having, like, a syndicated show? You know that I, I think I, that, I think I think you and a crew would be awesome. So I imagine that everybody who's in radio today, that's behind the mic in the local market, uh, uh, would love to be syndicated. It, it, you know, for different reasons, of right. course. But uh, really, you know, in ra radio is like probably like comedy and, and a few other things where uh, there's some of us making a salary which we can get by on, but you're not really making money until you're syndicated. Yeah. So, you know, you're only heard in one market. There's some people who are like, I know, uh, um, there's some, even in local, even in markets close to here, there's some people who are really uh, uh, cashing in on their celebrity uh, yeah. locally, but not a whole lot. Chewy in San Francisco, a couple of guys in New York, baby, and, you know. Right. But you know, for the most part, you know, the rest of us, we got jobs. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Okay, time out. I'm trying to see what it is. I can see what this camera because sometimes this camera will and it's still rolling. I rock it. So, my next question is: Do you have any advice for people who want to try to get in radio? Don't. Don't. <laughs> see, when I was younger, like I always had, a, I always had a thing like I always wanted to get in radio because really? I listened. To, I used to listen to like Russ Paul, Tom right. Jordan, and then you know Ricky Smiley. I listened to radio shows like that. And I was like, man, if I had me a crew, I said we'd run the morning time. Right. But I always think like my voice, right. like my voice is. I never felt like my voice was a radio type. Voice. I don't know how important that is anymore outside of. Uh, yeah, I see that now. I don't. Yeah, I, I see that now. But you know, back yeah. then, you know, you had had you had had a tone uh, right. like to get in there and keep people's attention and stuff yeah. like that. But now it's like uh, I, I mean, Smokey Robinson did radio. I, I tell you this, I love Smokey Robinson music, you yeah. know, for, for for what it was. But he was the absolute worst radio personality yeah. ever. And I'll be sure was a radio. He was terrible. Keith Sweat, in my opinion, is just terrible as a radio. I mean, just terrible as radio people. So, uh, if you want to get the radio, man, be relentless in getting in the door. You can learn what you have to learn when you get there. Yeah. I, I found that out too. Right. You, the things you need to know, you can learn once you get there. Just right. be relentless on getting in the door. I kind of got lucky and got into the door, but you know, getting in the street for it. I guess I was lucky too to get into this market too, and uh, I don't know. I just hadn't been relentless going any, you know, trying to go somewhere else. So yeah. uh, I'm still here. But with whatever you want to do, right, just be relentless. Just that's if that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. just and, and do what you got to do. Get in. You know, there's different ways to get into a station. Uh, one of the top mixers in this market was a street teamer. I remember when he was a street team and an intern. I think he was an intern too. But I remember when he, he was never behind the mic or anything he yeah. ever did was on the air. And now he's one of the more popular mixers in the city. Right. So yeah, just be relentless. Right. And it's the same thing I tell people. Like when people come ask me about podcasting and how I started the show, I was like, I'm learning as I go. Right. And that's why I tell people they have to work with us and so forth. Like with camera editing, I'm like, man, this is something new. You know, me and my crew wanted to do, and we doing it, and we just 
We and, just kind of building up, learning as we go. And know this about radio: when when I had the radio, my peers and competition were just other people in radio. Right. But in terrestrial radio, like turn it on, tune to a station type radio. Just not the case anymore. You got satellite radio, you got podcasters, mm-hmm. there are, uh, you got internet radio stations. You just have so there's you you have to you have to be compelling. At some point you're sitting there and you're just going through the motions. I do it all the time. I, I sit there and I just go through the motions of what I know to do in radio. And then I'll remember there are so many other options that people right. have now that I have to do something and say, Okay, I have to be more compelling to them. So the audience will want to listen to me. And right. sometimes, sometimes the music alone can do it. Because so, we play some great music. I mean, you know, old school R&B. And, and new R&B is some of the best music you can, you can have. So, but sometimes you have to be more compelling than every other thing that's pulling at your listening audience's attention. Cool, cool. So go ahead and give us a, your social media information so we can follow you and don't give, give us your time and stuff so people can call in and say, hey, I see you on the Oh So Dope right. Network and blah, 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 blah. Go ahead and give us And I make it real easy, Oh So Dope. Uh, uh, um, at I'll be Jam. And it's just one word. It looks like Al Jam. It <laughs> but, but, but it's that Al B Jam, and that's Twitter and Instagram. And really, the other social media outlets I hadn't figured out how to work. So I'm old, so I don't really know. I'm gonna, let's be honest. I swear to you, I got Snapchat, right? Oh, and people, I don't. You people both. add me on this joint all the time, and and I don't know what to do after they add me. And it'll look there, and it'll say, "Oh, they added you," and it'll say "Snap," and I'm like, I, 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 I don't want to send them a picture. I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do with Snapchat. I leave Snapchat to the young folks. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm like, like, I'm like, uh, I'm like nah, 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 I'm good. Right. Yes, Instagram and Facebook. That, that's enough. For really, that's Instagram enough. and Twitter for me. I mean, Facebook is. I that's how I keep in touch with like you know my friends that you know all of us that are close to death. I just. I, <laughs> I keep Facebook so I know. Oh, sh- damn. So and so died. Because that's how you find out, man. That's oh, true. man. He died. That's how you find out. You don't get phone calls no more. You know, people used to get phone calls. Hey, that call was some bad news. Now it's like, oh, no, not so and so. And that's how you find yeah. out. Now. So that's why I keep Facebook to know how many of my friends are gone. All right. So, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. I feel relevant right now. I'm because they so like, <laughs> No, this is the most relevant I've been in a long time. Really, no, I promise you. What uh, one, la- one lady a couple of weeks ago recognized my voice in a story. Doesn't that I have been feeling relevant? So you always, man. Every time, <laughs> man, every time we talk, we laughing and giggling about something. So right. you gonna always be, always be relevant. Right, so I might be the first two time interviewer here. You colder to that? With the- <laughs> so, so. And then you gonna be, we gonna do another one with you too, cause like I said, that that. Conversation we had about hip hop before we started the interview, like, right. yeah, we gonna have to get us a, uh, we gonna have to get us like a hip hop panel going and put right. it on you. So and get some young go. people, some some uh, on that panel, somebody, some bubble rap lovers, so I can beat them. Up. Oh, my son! So, oh yeah, yeah my son! Like, so Most definitely, my son. <laughs> he put me on so much. He put me on so much like mumbo jumbo, and I'm like. like you know, the beat be jamming, so, you know, I'm dancing, but when they get to the lyrics, like, I'm, I got the phone to my ear, like, what is this, what they say, so, yeah, most definitely. They lose me, everything they say after, walk it, like, I tell you, I don't know, I, I, right. I get that part, but the rest of it. Yeah, 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 well, thank you so much for coming out, for we gonna see you on the next video. Oh, come check me out at Larry Flint's House Club oh, on yeah, Wednesday oh, nights, yeah, Wednesday I host night. amateur night, I was we just... have a blast. <laughs> I ain't forgot. I'm coming on a Wednesday. I'm telling my mom I'm going to Bible study or something and tell us a late night Bible study. Everybody is Yeah, yeah. So Hustle Club Wednesday nights. 202 Conway Street, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. KDKS, uh, 102.1 on your FM dial or KDKS.FM or download the app. We're good. I don't know how to do that. All right. Thank you. (laughs)